Hello everyone, welcome to our video. I'm Ramin Nasei from Center for Teaching and Learning Economics at UCL. And today I'm gonna speak to four of my colleagues about group work. Since we moved to remote teaching, it has become more important than before to create a social environment for our students to learn from each other. So I'm gonna speak to uh, Koloda, Parama, and Frank, and Sylvia about their experience of doing a group work for their assignments for the previous academic year. So I'll start with Cloda. Hi, Cloda. Hi, Ramin. So first question, briefly describe what group work you use in your module. Okay, so I teach a module for, it's a mix of second and third years called Economics of Regulation. And in that module, since 2012, there's been a group work project where the students are given a sector, so the water sector or the electricity sector, and asked to find out how regulation works in practice in that sector using the economics from the module. There's two outputs, a written report and a presentation. Very good. Parama? I mean, um, I use two different types of uh, group work, actually. So in um, my industrial relations course, uh, I use something very similar to CLODA. So it's a case study that students do in groups. Um, and there's a group presentation and an individually written report. But I also use a much more involved um, you know, sort of way of doing group work called team-based learning in my first year course, um, where students actually work in their teams in every live session uh, that we have, and again, produce a research project with presentations and individually written reports at the end. And is all of the output assessed? All of the output is assessed, yes. Very good. Frank? In uh, several of my modules, I use group work in a, you might say, a relatively informal way, where those groups are study groups that students can uh, collect themselves in um, uh, individually. Um, in environmental economics there, the group work is actually also an assessed component with a weight of 40%. Um, and there the group work is partially the same kind of sort of study group like work throughout the entire term, but it also leads to a research project and a project report, as well as a presentation that they give about this project. Very good. Sylvia? Hi, I use uh, um, uh, group work uh, in the form of a group video project in my module of the, on the economics of the public sector. Uh, this is assessed uh, group work and it is worth 25% uh, of the final mark. And uh, the other components of the assessment are another 25% component on the same topic of the group video and uh, a final exam. Excellent, excellent. Going back to Cloda. Uh, Cloda, why do you use group work What's, what, and what students think of it? Um, so, as people who know me know, I'm a skills obsessive um, and I've worked outside academia for a long time, but even us in the centre, we work all together as a team. I don't do anything in isolation, even in academia, and I think it's really important that students get the opportunity to understand how to work with other people. Um, particularly important if they're going to be working away from each other, away from campus, that they have the opportunity to meet people. And I think the group work, as Frank and Pram has said, either in the classroom, so in live sessions where they're just working together, but also once it's assessed, then they engage a bit more. Um, it's just a core skill for life, learning how to work with people. So Frank, why group work? Um, so uh, partially, of course, for all of the reasons that Cloda and Pram already mentioned. Uh, it is a very important life skill that, that students need to acquire. Um, a specific thing, I think, perhaps in the group work of, of the module that, that I'm teaching, the environmental economics module, is also that these environmental uh, economics problems tend to be sort of very multifaceted and, and very complex, which means that exam questions are usually a very poor way of assessing whether students are, are capable of appreciating the complexity of a subject. Um, and usually the typical exam format of, of two hours is, is also not an amount of time in which they could actually give evidence of that they appreciate the complexity of a subject. And, and our experience uh, of me and, and Christian Spielman, with whom I set up this course originally, 
has really been that the group project is on the one hand a possibility for students to explore that complexity which they would not be able to do in terms of normal assignments normal problem sets so let me go back to specifics uh what kind of outputs are produced uh, as a group work and what are the outcomes and how are you going to organize this now that everything has gone uh, remote? Cloda? Um, so in the past, I've had two outputs. So the overall project is worth 40%. The first 15% has been for a presentation, which they used to do in tutorials in the classroom. That presentation I'm now moving to a shorter recorded video. Um, one of the things that I'll miss is the opportunity to ask them questions in the classroom about their presentation. So what I'm doing is having almost like Viva feedback sessions. So they'll submit on a Wednesday and on the Friday the team book a slot with me and I will give them feedback on their presentation but also ask questions. And one of the reasons for that is just to check that everyone in the, in the team is on board. Um, but the other reason is the feedback from the presentation is there to help them write the second output, which is a written report, which is due at the end of term. So it's very similar content for both outputs, but the presentation is about the big picture messages and the report is much more about the detail and the evidence. Um, so I can use the presentation to tell them what they've missed, where they've gone wrong, that kind of thing. The written report is just a Word document. I have played around with wikis and blogs and other things in other courses, but on this one I've stuck with the Word report. Um, it has worked fine. I have done various things, and we might talk about it later, about individual contribution. This year I'm going to have the Word report, which is the whole group, and I get the common mark for that, which will be worth 20%. And then there's a 5% where each individual has to submit a 500 word reflection on the group work project. So not an output about what they learned, but about their experience with the group work project, um, which is my way of just making sure that everybody's learned something from it, but also checking that everybody's done something. To so some if I had to summarize, it would be presentation, a um, group report and a reflection on the group report. Yeah. Or on the group experience. Very good. And uh, on the presentation, you do get to do a Viva now. Yeah, so there's a video and a Viva, whereas I used to just ask questions in the classroom. Very good. Very good. Frank? So the output of the environmental economics uh, group project is an individual report. However, that individual report has three sections which uh, should be identical to all the, the group members, say, submitting the report. And the fourth section, which is the discussion and conclusion section, that's the one where students are invited to differentiate between each other. They, there's no uh, obligation. So if a group has worked extremely well together and they're very happy with their discussion and conclusions, then it's perfectly fine for them to submit four or three identical um, uh, submissions. Um, the, the inclusion of this fourth um, uh, section was in the pre-remote, uh, pre-online version of the course, was mainly intended as a tool for students to have some leverage in, in their internal management of their groups, um, to be able to, if they thought the group was not working very well, or if they thought that some of the group members were not doing their fair share, that in principle, a student was capable of withholding some, say, analysis or withholding some insights and putting them into their own discussion and conclusion sections rather than sharing them with the group. Uh, my experience over the past couple of years was that that is an option that was only very rarely used. Um, which may be connected to the fact that I don't create the groups, but the students select themselves into the groups with their peers that they want to be in a group with. Um, this year, what I will add, because of the, um, uh, the, the, the remoteness of it, is that I will ask students to uh, record a five minute, I would essentially say a commentary on their own discussion and conclusions section, which is mainly because I want to hear the students talk about their own discussion and conclusions, even if what they've submitted is, is sort of consistent or identical to what the others in the group have submitted. Very good. Sylvia? So the output of my group work is a 
three minutes uh, um, uh, video uh, in which the group is going to discuss uh, an issue on public policy and they receive uh, some guidance, some references and uh, um, some prompt questions uh, that should uh, enable them to answer the uh, question itself. As for the, well, the output of the group work is already digital. Well, it is born digital, so uh, there is not going to be massive uh, disruption uh, uh, in this sense uh, uh, due to the current situation. What is going to change probably is the coordination among students. So uh, not being uh, in person probably is going to increase or to change the coordination costs uh, within the groups. So uh, what I'm going to what I'm thinking about is to provide them um, with a sort of exemplary timeline for the meetings, as well as with uh, some possible um, softwares that might enable them to uh, smooth out their um, uh, meetings in the sense that it might be difficult to brainstorm remotely so that there are some software out there that might be used and I can uh, provide them at least with the uh, reference to the software. I've seen Mural might be quite good for this, uh, uh, for this end. Okay, so far we talked about why we do group works and how to organize them. Now let's get to the marking of the group works. So Cluda, how do you mark these outputs and what's your criteria for that? Um, so for the written report itself, I mainly use our department grade descriptors um, quite closely. I do give them an indication of how I interpret them for the report. Um, so they're, it's basically broken down into the level of economic analysis, the understanding of the sector, the ability to apply economic analysis to the sector. For the written report, there's also a criteria around, e read, I guess, the reader experience. Um, for the presentation, again, it's around understanding of the case. So there's less focus on economics for the presentation. It's about understanding of the case. Evidence of team working is the thing that I focus on in the presentation. So the sense that they're working as a team. I mean, I've literally had teams where they didn't know each other's names, things like that. Um, and the audience experience is the third criteria. Um, and they have them from the beginning. I explain them to them regularly. Um, but I keep as close as possible to the descriptors that are used for exams and other assessments that they should be familiar with as well. Sylvia? Uh, yes, the, um, similarly to, um, well, to the rest, I provide uh, students uh, uh, with the marking scheme since the beginning and what I'm going to assess is their ability to think as economists rather than to be a, a smart video maker so that the, the key uh, parameters uh, of assessment are the use of economic analysis, uh, how well they did support their arguments with the relevant evidence, whether the video uh, is focused or not on the question that has been asked, and for what concern the um, technical quality of uh, the video, I make clear to them that this is a residual um, parameter of evaluation and I'm happy if I can hear what they're saying and if I can see what they have filmed. So they, it is on economic analysis, not on video making. Okay, we'll get to the most difficult bit about the group work marking, which is about, you know, whether you assess individual contribution to group works or not. And if you do that, how? Cloda? Okay, so over the years I've evolved this. Um, I used to not, um, and I spent a lot of the term intervening on complaints about people free riding on projects, but also people taking over the project. So not just people doing too little, but some people being, you know, over dictatorial or whatever in the team. And I began to realize that you kind of have to teach people how to work together. It's not something that comes naturally to them. Um, 
So my approach to individual contribution is they can get plus or minus 5% of the group mark. Um, so the aim is that everybody gets the group mark, but the way I assess whether they should get a bit more or a bit less is it's quite complicated. So when we were on campus, there was um, sort of engagement with activities mark, which was if they showed up to the three case study practicals that we had, so they came and worked with their team. If they completed the presentation, so I have had situations where a student hasn't just bothered to come up for the presentation, and if they completed the peer feedback quiz. So that was like a mark. You either got zero or one for um, activity contribution. And then the rest of it was based on what your peers thought of your contribution. So I have three Moodle quizzes through the term where they give feedback on their peers. And the feedback is not about the quality of the peers' work, it's about their effort. Um, the students, I share that feedback with the students anonymously on Moodle so that in their gradebook they see what their teammates are saying about them and what score they've got. It's based on something that our engineering faculty have developed called IPAC. So you get a score if you get one, you're doing as expected relative to your peers. If you get less than one, you're lower than expected. If you get more than one. And then I've got a transparent approach, which they all know about if you'll get 1% extra or 1% less if you get these scores. The reason why I've done all of that is because I don't want one point of engagement or one week of the term to affect your individual contribution. Stuff happens to people. There's reasons why somebody might not engage one week or you know, even for three weeks because nobody in the team knows what's going on in people's lives. One of the value of the peer feedback is I see it. So if I see if there is an issue with an individual, I will contact them. Um, and really in a non-judgmental checking in that everything's okay. And 99% of the time there is something going on with that student um, and often involves me recommending extenuating circumstances for them. It's very rarely just they can't be bothered. Frank? So in, in my project in principle, um, uh, they can differentiate in, in the discussion and conclusion sections amongst each other um, uh, whether or not I would, I would mark them differently. Um, uh, they submit individually, so they don't see each other's submissions. But my experience is that most groups actually work very well and uh, submit the same work and then they end up with the, the same grade. Um, because every section of that report has the same weight. It means that in principle, there is a bandwidth of 25 marks uh, worth of differentiation of 100. Um, um, so in a sense, it's difficult to talk about what the group mark is, because you might say the group mark would be the average of, of those scores. Um, but like I said, my experience is, is that in many cases, uh, these groups actually work very well. Sylvia? Uh, I don't uh, um, provide individual marks uh, or uh, premia, so I gave uh, uh, the group work uh, a group mark, where uh, all um, group mates have uh, the same mark. And for what concerns free riding, I have a sort of an etiquette that is based on communication, first uh, um, within the group and later with me. And also for the way in which I have uh, designed this uh, assessment, I have a group work, but also an individual work based on the same question. So uh, I think that, uh, uh, well, my, my effort is, uh, um, well, providing incentives uh, to work uh, rather than punishments uh, in the case of free riding. Very good, very good. Now as the final question, uh, if someone is contemplating or thinking about doing a group work assessment, what would be your advice to that person? So basically two tips that come to your mind. What would be those two tips? Parama? So I think, uh, I mean, the, the, I can give three trip tips, which is that it's planning, planning, planning. So starting ahead of time, having very well-defined plans, both for yourself and, and for any other lecturers and Marcus and Paul, but for the students as well, so there's a very clear structure. Within that structure, obviously, 
you know, you can give people as much freedom as you want, but students know what to expect. Um, and I think for myself also, I found it really useful to have contingency plans. So plan B's and plan C's. So this is how it works ideally. And then something happens and it's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, th there's a way to do exactly the same thing, basically the same outcome in this other way as well. But it's very important to start thinking way ahead, write down everything, make everything as clear, as open as possible. Cloda? Um, so I think building on what Parama said about planning, my two tips are communication is key and enjoy it. So the communication is key bit is most of these group work projects run over a term or a big chunk of the term. It's not something they do at the very end or that they do sort of after the term is finished. So it's important you keep reminding them about key mind milestones. I'd like to leave my groups alone as much as possible because I think one of the things is working out how to work as a group, but it's not natural for them to work together and they're not used to it. So keeping communicating with them, but also emphasizing the need for them to communicate with you. So if they're unsure of anything, either as a group or as an individual, I have discussion forums and I've always used discussion forums. So I'll keep doing them for them to ask questions um, and they can ask pretty much anything. I've worked in the sectors that they're researching. I'm happy to guide them to the best documents to do anything like that. So I always emphasize to them that they need to communicate with me. I won't know if there's an issue. I won't know if they have a question and only if they come to me. And again, that's a bit like the manager where you go to your project leader or whatever. The enjoy it part is one of the real things that I love about doing group work is that you see students getting to know each other because I do it across the term and there's interaction in the classroom around it. You get to know your students much better. Um, but every year, even though they're working on the same cases, I get very different outputs and different angles on things. So I learn all the time from what they're producing. Um, and I think that, you know, for me, seeing them learning and seeing them applying what they're learning is really interesting. Um, but it is a commitment, but you can get a lot out of it if you don't see it as hard work, but see it as, wow, this is students doing research in the area that I'm interested in. Frank? Um, if I would have to sort of come up with two pieces of advice, then, then I would have two related pieces of advice, I think. What, one is make sure that the group work project or activity that the students need to work on actually really requires group work. And what I mean by that is not so much that, that it requires group work because we tell them to work in a group, but that the sort of the expectation horizon of what they need to do is such that they quickly realize that if they don't work together, they will not be able to meet that. Um, if I look at the projects that, that I get in my environmental economics course, then I think if those would have been done by a single person, they would have been worth the total 15 credits of the entire module. And in, so in terms of workloads, I, I can see that students are things which they can do things which they can only do because they work as a group and not as an individual. Um, and what, what is slightly related to that, and which is also connected to the point I made earlier about that I'm expecting these students to do things beyond the material that we've, that we've dealt with in class, is I would recommend to the lecturers to, to don't do too much for your students. Um, if you want the students to do group work and to show how they can work together and, and to be productive, then I think a mistake that we sometimes can make is that we give them too much already. So that we actually take away, for example, the opportunity for them to find lots of interesting literature or maybe lots of crappy literature that they have to choose then not to, to use. And so I think sometimes those are things which I would really recommend. So don't do too much and make sure that the group work actually really requires group work. Brilliant. Thank you all for your great responses and uh, best of luck with your group work assessment in the coming year. Thank you. Bye.